Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey everybody, Rob Novell here. Welcome back to another episode of the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be with us today. And man, this I think it's going to be a fun one today. We we are, I'm bringing a, a guest back that I had on, um, I think it was, it was, it was April 18th. I remember that because that's my mom's birthday and it was actually oh, happy birthday, Barb. <laughs> my grandfather's birthday as well. They were born on the, the same day. And when we first found out we were having Aaliyah, that was her original due date. And oh. she got stubborn and, and waited four days. So the 22nd is hers, but all of those connections back to, oh, and look at that. That's kind of exactly what we're we're talking today. Connecting, yep, perfect. connecting, connecting some dots. But man, we've got, um, I, I brought a young man in uh, back April 18th again, named Devin Ramon, and he's back with us today. How are you, Devin? I'm doing great. Uh, I feel I feel so much better now that I've been at CNS. It's just, it's a lasting effect to have on you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, I'll give you 30 minutes to quit talking that way. <laughs> um, no, here, here's here's the thing. And the reason I, I wanted to to bring you back on was not total full circle, but, in, in, you know, for conversation's sake, I just kind of wanted to share with those listening what's happened since April 18th. And um, so 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 before we can do that, let's back up a little bit. Probably if that was April 18th. I would say somewhere around the end of March, 1st of April, I get this message on Messenger on Facebook, you know, from some guy looking for a job at CNS. You know, uh, to Devin, to be completely honest, I I I have people reach out to me uh, frequently. And uh, I, yeah. I can I can attest to that. I saw that. <laughs> And they're, you know, they're, they are, are wanting to be a part of what we're doing. And man, I'm humbled by that. And I'm, I'm thankful mm-hmm. for that. Yeah. I'm thankful for that. But man, I am very careful, cautious and protective over CNS uh, mm-hmm. because of the 58 years my dad invested uh, before handing the keys over to me. And now that it's on my watch, I think I'm, I'm even a little more protective of who we are and what we do, because this is 100% ministry for me. Yeah, Everything that we do at CNS is about helping people, helping ministries develop, pursue, and invest in, in, into their gifts and in their calling. So I, I, I joke, and I've told a couple of people this, I, I started responding to your Facebook Messenger, and it was the stock, hey, we're good right now. We don't need any. It was just kind of the stock response. And right in the middle of that, God said, ask him for his phone number. And Devin, I didn't even go back and delete the beginning of it. I just, I just, okay. So I'm like, but hey, well, how about you shoot me your number and we talk? And we did. And that led us to the April 18th podcast. And uh, we did that. And when we got done recording that, we we stayed connected here on the line and we talked a little bit and you asked me, hey, um, would it be possible if, if I just came down to CNS for a day or two just so I could check it out and see what it's all about and this and that? Yeah. And, um, you know, you wouldn't have to pay me, just cover my expenses. I'll come down and I'll shoot some pictures for you and get you some footage. And so, you know, it didn't take me long to go, OK. Yeah, that, that sounds like a deal. So we set that up for you to come down and leave on Tuesday morning or something like that. And all well, I know, yeah, well, I, to leave Wednesday morning, Wednesday, stay through Tuesday and leave Wednesday morning. Yeah. That's right. So 
All I know is we got there and I had you, I brought the staff in early on Saturday. So I had you there because of some things I, I needed for you to do to, to help us. And um, man, it was just kind of one of those instant things I knew I'm, 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 ext- I'm an extremely observant person. So I'm there, um, got a, a plan and I've got a, a job to do. And I'm thinking about the upcoming week, but at the same time, I'm just watching you interact with with my staff and seeing how all that was going. And I don't know, I think by Monday, I'm like, is there any way you could maybe stay the rest of the week? I mean, I knew. Yeah, I I knew at that point that, hey, this is working. And here's the thing. And and there's so there's been a lesson in this for me. But then I want us to talk about something specific here in a minute that I think can encourage people. Um, you know, the lesson for me was, you know, maybe to pump the brakes a little bit and make sure that I'm not hearing Rob's voice, that I'm hearing God's voice, because at the end of the day, that that's what matters the most. Um, he's the one that's in control. Uh, only he can arrange things. So my my dad used to call these and, and Devin, I believe that's what's happened here. Uh, dad would say, Rob, you'll have relationships in your life, but then you'll have uh, kingdom connections. Yes. You'll, you'll have you'll have people that God's going to bring into your path that are going to be able to uh, help you in ministry, link arms and and help you get to the end game, to the goal yeah. that God needs you to reach. And so being observant, watching you and seeing what was happening in those first couple of days, uh, Devin, that's what I was seeing. I was seeing you click with our staff. I was seeing you click with our students. Um, I was just seeing it as a win win. And so, you know. Connections are important. You you took a chance and just randomly. So, so how did I, I don't know? We talked about that. How did that even happen? How did how did you know who we were? How did you find me? How how did all that happen? Oh, at the time, I wasn't necessarily looking for like a job in the sense of like, hey, I want like I want to be on staff at the school. Um, right. I was kind of looking to take my social media um, work and my social media agency in a direction of I wanted to be doing um, like workshop type stuff. And so I was brainstorming. And I was like, well, I know there's like schools of music in, you know, Christian schools of music at that. And there's a couple of them or one of them. And I started doing research. And I was like, Charles Naval School of Music, that's the one that I hear about most often and that I see things about. And you guys were, I don't think I messaged the other ones or uh, the other one, I guess. Um, I messaged Charles Naval School of Music. And that was, I was like, hey, can I come do a workshop with you guys is what I wanted to do. But then, like we said, God had other plans. But right. that was just, um, yeah, I wanted to be doing workshop type stuff. And I was like, what better way to do a workshop than at a school instead of me having to like, oh, hey, I'm going to be in this city and trying to get people there. You guys already had that. You had a great reputation. And I was like, well, they're working with the people I want to be working with already. But right. God had a different plan. And, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, OK, this kind of this kind of setting us up for, for where I want to go next. Um we're going to we're going to talk about several things. Um, you, you do photography, you do social media, uh, social media coaching, it, it, consulting. Is that a fair title? Well, I do social media management and um, coaching consulting. Um, okay. the, I'm not really um, like for the coaching aspect of it. I'm not for hire to like coaching. I'm for hire to either consult with you on your social media or to manage it and do okay. content creation type stuff. Okay. But I have my Facebook group where I just, that's where I do the coaching and gotcha. I just give free educational content in there. Gotcha. So, um, you know, that has been fun to watch and, and even an enlightening for me on given days. I feel this way, man, you can't be a teacher if you're not a student. So yes. every single day I am looking to learn something every mm-hmm. single day and there's plenty for me to learn plenty yep, me too for, for me, for me too. to learn so um but here here's what I want to talk about because this is kind of kind of and I don't even know that you and I have talked about this but we're, we're fixing to um mm-hmm. I've noticed something post CNS that's just really really exciting so we are right at you know the day we're recording this um we we've school concluded about a month ago so we've 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 had about a month pass since CNS twenty three, and I've again being that observant person that I am, 
uh, it's really exciting what I'm seeing because we are we are way ahead of schedule from where we normally are this point in a given year. Normally, I'm still just kind of r- recuperating, recovering, <laughs> yeah. trying to, trying to get over what we just did. But man, we are deep and thick into planning CNS 24. Um, cool. Today, I developed the private Facebook page, and so it's there. Uh, mm-hmm. Registration open se- open September the first, so I wanted to have that in place when when we get there. So you found us because you said you, you had seen what we were doing, and and that just simply comes from content and actively posting things. And your social media does you no good. If it's been six months since you posted anything. Right. And I I think a big, um, a big thing that you guys have going for your social media is the relationship that you have with your followers and your audience, which that's where, that's where, what social media is. It's social media. So you have to be social. And if you're doing things right, your following will share your stuff. They will engage with your stuff. They will talk about you. That's what you guys have going. So if you didn't have that, I probably would not have seen your stuff and probably would not have heard of it. So, so there's lesson number one, and, and then here's been the exciting thing, Devin, and then I want you, want you to speak a little further on what you just said, um, kind of piggybacking off what I'm getting re- ready to tell you. I've, I have, um, and I can't, I can't publicly share these yet, but they'll be out, they'll be out soon. Um, we have been contacted by more opportunities in this first month for our students. Yes. Than I I can ever remember in the first month. Wow. Post a, a summer school, so I know for a fact that um, one opportunity opened that I called one of our students about and shared, and the only reason that opportunity developed was they have been uh, they're engaged with your online your Facebook group. Well, so everybody knows why we're talking. What's the name of that group? Uh, Social media coaching for singers and musicians. Okay. Um, very simple, very simple name, but that in the, the cover photo or the picture is um, it's just black and it says so, uh, social media coaching, I think in gold letters. Okay, perfect. So I've been watching this, this one particular student engage almost daily mm-hmm. with, with, with what you're sharing there. And I think I know what you're talking about. They were set up for an audition because they had posted content that allowed someone looking to fill a position. They these days you don't even have to go through, you know, 30 years ago, you'd you'd have to set up an audition. Yeah. You know, these days, if you have stuff setting on your social media, people can find you before they ever talk to you and, yeah, they, and it, they can they can decide whether they want to talk to you or not yes it, it's so, it's almost like it, it's so crazy because it's like a business card and a portfolio all in one where and the cool thing is is like if i guess if i like owned a group and i was looking for a replacement and i was scrolling through social media and you know if you were a singer rob novell's singing post came up you're like oh okay you know this this guy is good i can click on your name I can go through and find everything that I need already without ever having to reach out to you. And right. I'm also kind of, you know, th- there's perks to that as the group owner and the artist is like, oh, they saw my stuff. But then the group owner is like, eh, they're probably not going to work. So we'll just not reach out to them, you know, right. not in a bad way, but it it's it's perfect. No, I, I think I think l- let's talk this real quick, because um, we're talking about content. We're c- talking about uploading. We're talking about what's the word, the convenience. Mm-hmm. Of yes, having having your digital portfolio out there, however, yeah. however that can that can come back to bite you. Uh, yes. I have all of my social media set up to where I have to approve someone's mm-hmm. post. Me too, because um, you know uh, the sweet lady that came by and bought three of my CDs after the concert. I don't know that she's posting the best part of my service or the yes. worst or the worst yes. part of my service. Yes. 
So I think there's got to be some quality control there because as in this situation where the video um, attracted attention for our student, yes, other content there could discourage. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing that I like. I'm not a singer. I'm not a good singer, but I I grew up in music. I'm a musician. I've been around singers so so much in my life right and i know i know talent when i see it and hear it and i know the opposite when i see it and hear it um but i i forgot where i was gonna go with this but anyways um i now i'm at the point where like i'm teaching my social media clients like yeah you even though i'm coaching you and you're posting the right content you still have to sound good in your content because right. just like we're talking about it, you never know who who that who that record label might catch you or that art that group that's looking for a replacement might catch you somebody with an opportunity might see that video and if it doesn't sound good they're just going to swipe past it if it sounds like you you have to sound good in your in your content i can't i can't do everything for you so i'm starting to teach like you still have to sound good in your content you, <laughs> you know absolutely absolutely um and you know we've all been there we've done this we you know from your your experience in this my experience in, in this too just the audition phases my favorite part yes. of 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 american idol and the voice my favorite part is the audition process and probably i still lean more towards american idol because we don't necessarily see the audition process with the voice right we see their their contestants that Yes, they they made have it through. made it through to to the to the blinds right yeah, so yeah. um but with idol you know i'll never forget you know i i miss simon because he was just so brutally honest yeah and you know i remember one time he's like who told you you could sing yeah, yeah. and that that's the thing is that i'm starting to realize like i'm i'm not honest i'm not brutally honest with people but god gave you a gift Right. Just like singing is not everybody's gift. So why I don't think it's wrong to encourage somebody else in the gifts that they actually were given. Sure. Because the opportunities that God has for you when you start using the gift he gave you are going to be endless and way more than the opportunities you have with a gift you think you have that you there don't you have to have. You know, I, I think the carpenter's rule measure twice, cut once may mm -hmm. not be a bad idea is get some get some people that that you trust their opinion to say, Hey, is this a good representation of what I'm doing? Should yes. I have this up or should I not have this up? Um, okay. Let me ask you another question about content and then we're going to, we're going to move on. Um, because what I'm fixing to ask you, Devin, we could spend an entire 30, 40 minute podcast. Okay. Okay. So just give me a nugget and, and then this will be our We'll we'll park this for our third podcast down the road. Uh, I'm good. As important as it is to to quality control what you're putting up there that represents your ministry from a performance standpoint, how important is it to safeguard what you are posting content wise that could negatively reflect upon the ministry that you're trying to build? Yeah. Oh gosh, you're right. That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I, I think it's very important and it, it's necessary. Um, because especially in the Christian music industry, we right. we get lost in that we have to put our we have to stand our ground so much that we have to put our opinions out there and we have to, you know, we have to be big and bold about them. I agree with that. We have to stand up for our beliefs and the wrong that's going on in the world. But the, you have to be careful what you're putting out there because there are groups and artists who are just radical about it. And then you're going to build a radical following. You're going to build the following based off the content you're posting out there. there you go. So if you want to build um, a following that is for your ministry and that's positive and good and is trying to be the hands and feet of Jesus, then you need to make sure that's the content that you're putting out there to encourage that. If you're an artist that's putting out their radical opinions and, you know, extreme opinions, then that's that's the following you're going to build. So you have to be careful with what you're putting out there. Politics has no business 
It has no you know, business. I, I, I agree because everyone has their opinion and mm-hmm. you're not going to sway anybody. So yeah. when I see people engage in, in debate online, it, it's almost extremely comical to me because mm-hmm. nobody's going to win. Nobody's no. going to sway or change anybody's viewpoint. So the Bible says what? The greatest of these is what? Love. Mm-hmm. And I think if we are coming across from a point that isn't love, I think it can negatively affect our yes. our, te- our testimony, which negatively affects our our ministry. You said yes. something. You said something in our first podcast, and it was very Im- profound, and it was an, it made an impact on me so much I can't remember what you said. That's how impactful <laughs> it was. No, it was the. It was the circles and the circles and the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the you can't. I, I always teach my students that you can't be a circle and a pile of circles and expect anybody to notice you. That one is that what you're talking right, about? Right, right. Yeah, it's now, when, once you start changing your shape is when people start noticing you. And this isn't what you mean by that. Getting on on social media today on your ministry page and blurting out. Um, the, so so there was some big political news yesterday Uh down here close to me yes and so facebook was full of those conversations last night and good people that i know just making simple not not questionable as far as content but questioning some of the events that took place man they were attacked from every potential angle you can imagine yeah, I and that it. that wasn't that wasn't their their intent because I know that I know one of these people well it wasn't their yeah. intent. They're just saying, "Hey, uh, sorry, this happened today," you know. Yeah. And then it it just went off. So again, you know, um, that's not that's not changing shape. Uh, yes, that that's, changing. Well, we we so two things that I want to talk about about that is. One is changing shape would be just like we talked about earlier is making sure that your content is good, that it's the best that it can be, because right. we, we live in a world where everybody thinks they're a singer now and social media encourages that. It just blows my mind. So you can change your shape and be different by being great, because the 5,000, 500,000 other people who are posting singing content may not be great. But if yours right. is, you you just change your shape right there. So making sure that you have consistent, great content is changing your shape enough. Right. Okay. All right. Good. Good stuff there. Again, um, we 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 probably, you know what? What we're gonna do? We're gonna wait. We're only a couple months away from 2024, mm-hmm. and uh, what what happens in this country in 2024? A heck of a lot. We uh, we get a leadership change. Okay. Get, so uh, stop right. Stop right there. Um, let's let a couple months of that cycle go through and then let's, yeah. let's you and me talk about what people are posting okay. and, and, and look, look, I don't understand how people think they can hide under their personal page and it not affect their ministry page. I don't know either, but that, so when I was at CNS, one of the things that I taught in my, um, my class that I did, um, was. Facebook is referred largely or by a lot of people, it's referred to as a devil's playground, right? Like we've all heard that. Right. But I don't think it's a coincidence that God or as a Christian, you can use that. You can use social media, the devil's playground to reach hundreds of thousands of people with your message. So it's all how you choose to play on that playground, right? If you're posting even on your personal page and you're in ministry, it's going to come back to bite you if you're not playing on that playground the right way. There you know, you it's you, you got to you got to play on the playground the right way. Man, that, that's solid right there. OK, so we talked about our connection, how we met. We talked about um, you coming into the school and I've talked already about how your input and your teaching and your influence has um, developed opening doors and connections yeah. for students. So um, talk about your experience at CNS on this area of relationships and connections. Yeah. So I, I told you, I don't know if I shared it with the whole staff, but I know I told you that, you know, CNS for me that week was, was healing for me. Um, it, because of my experience growing up and just things that I'm dealing with in life right now, 
I, I, I struggle with supportive people. You know, I've, I've yet before the week of CNS, I, people that truly support me and were like behind what I was doing was not, was like very far and few between, but CNS, I got there and every staff member immediately, Marianne, the first night was like, I, I need you to, you know, do photos for me this week. <laughs> okay. And then we just, we hit it off from there. And then Billy and just, John and George Groves, man, those two right there, like you said, <laughs> if I was at CNS or anything, it was probably to meet those two. Um, but just the love that is at CNS among the staff and how caring they are about the students and how caring the students are about each other. And just it, it, it was very cool. It was strange for me, but it was very cool to be in that environment and to, to build those relationships and just get along with everybody and to not have to look over your shoulder because you're fearful that, you know, the wrong person is going to, you know, just flare up that day or something. It, it was, it was a great environment. It was everybody there. I have lifelong friendships now. It, there's nothing like it. There's nothing no. like it. Um, so what, what I noticed again, being observant, what I've noticed about you, um, you are very confident about what you do. You're very confident about when you walk in a room that you you belong in that room. It wasn't like we had to take three days to get you warmed up just from the get go. You walked in and you're like, OK, God, you open this door. I'm here. I'm going to honor that. Um, so there's a and there, there's a there's a difference between being confident and cocky. Yeah. And it's much easier to be confident in what you're doing when you know that God gave you that. Absolutely. And that I think that's, I don't feel like I'm confident in it at all. Um, but it, it, there is a piece about it and there is a confidence about it when you know that God, when you prayed for that and God answered that and gave you that, you know that it's meant to be. So, oh, and, and that, you know, if you're faithful with the little, he'll bring you the, the, the yeah. much. Uh, I think, I think, Maybe my angle of confidence is your angle of you're just being a good steward of an opportunity God gave you. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad would say it this way. If you want friends, Rob, you got to be friendly. Yeah. And yeah. If you want respect, you got to respect others. Uh, so it's yeah. it's this is a it's not a one way street. This thing here is a two way street. So, yeah. And I knew that I was walking into a uh, a situation where everybody that was on staff, all the adults there are going to be spot on with what they were doing and they're very well known and they are incredible so that I'm either going to have to fake it until I make it or <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going to figure it out. But I knew that everybody else there, I was going to have to uh, live up to those standards and, and you know, listen, sink or swim. You didn't do it. The, uh, the biggest, just so you know, moving forward, I won't edit this out, but just so you know, moving forward, the phrase that gets me the hardest is fake it till you make it because we see it just happen way too much, way too mm -hmm. much, uh, personally, spiritually, musically. Yeah. Yes. We, we, we see that phrase. So, um, you, you come in, you, you fit right in like a glove. And since then, Devin, um, again, I'm observant. Things are, things are rolling. Things are moving. Um, you are getting ready to, uh, launch a new endeavor. Let's talk about that yes. here. Today. Yeah. So, it's been a thing that I wanted to do the last couple of years, but I just didn't have the, it didn't click with me that I could do it uh, until now. Um, and I think CNS was absolutely a huge part of it, but um, a new podcast um, called the green room podcast um, and any musician that tours or has, you know, lived that life that's hearing this is going to know why it's called the green room. Um, but if you're listening and you don't know what a green room is, and that's just the place where, you know, singers and musicians, they hang out before the concert in the green room. It's filled with snacks and food. And that's where the good conversations happen. That's where you share memories. You, you, you know, you just you talk with each other and you have a great time. So that's why I called it the green room, because I'm in each episode is going to feature a different singer, um, musician or someone from the music industry that can give great insight to people that are listening um, and we're just going to, we're going to talk, we're going to have great conversation. We're going to have fun. We're going to share memories, um, share stories, all kinds of the good stuff. Um, but I leave actually Sunday, I think it's Sunday morning, very early to head down to Nashville um, because I'm stopping in Ohio first to do uh, a photo shoot for Randy. And then I go straight to Nashville after that for a few days to start recording the podcast. 
So that, that so, I'm excited so about that. We don't have to talk about guests, but how many spots do you have set up? Uh, I think I have five or six right now. Okay. That's, that's so exciting. It is. I'm, I'm trying to have enough content that when I, when I post the very first episode that I can start posting one episode a week for months and just have them lined up. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm trying to get more artists lined up for sure. Yeah. You, and, and once this thing gets, gets going, is there an official launch date for that? Um, I think it will be probably October 1st. Um, Okay. Because I have these ones that I want to uh, in Nashville that I want to get done, recorded, edited, and then I'm doing some in NQC, which I think will be a bulk of a lot of episodes. So once I get that done, Very then cool. I can start posting. Man, I'm excited about that. You're right. Those are um, I know some of the, I think I know everybody that you're, you've got set up for next week in Nashville. Yeah. And the uh, I love the conversational angle of that and that that's what i love about our best day yet podcast is is you know when i have a guest in it just it's very conversational mm -hmm. we've been releasing some of the best day yet lives that we did at one o'clock during cns 23 yeah. and um those those have been going great and getting getting a lot of good feedback and response there um hey before we before we went live here uh you were talking about um a tiktok that you had yeah. seen today. You want to, you want to speak on that? Yeah, it, uh, I think the Lord used it to, uh, to, you know, just put a message in my heart, but it's been, it's been bothering me. Um, but I tied it to CNS in a good way because this TikTok um, was from a young man who um, is attempting to make it uh, successfully in the music industry. Um he he's not talented with music um and the, the experiences that he's having in the music industry or what he thinks is the music industry are a result of uh him not pursuing the gifts that he actually has um we'll say it that way and he took to tiktok and was giving the advice of if you're a singer trying to make it in the music industry um for fame and money you're in the wrong place it's not going to happen while in Christian music, we're not in it for the fame or money, but all that to say that CNS is a place like you have to be careful who you're taking advice from. And CNS is a place where when you come there, everybody there, you can trust the advice they're giving you because they are all successful in what they're doing. And they're trusted by other people in the music industry where someone like that, if I was a new artist who didn't know about things and I had heard that TikTok, I probably could have given up pretty easily because I was getting advice based off of his experiences and he was having those negative experiences because he wasn't cultivating his correct gift. Um, so you have to be careful who you're taking advice from. And CNS is a place filled with people who you can trust getting advice from. Um, and that when I heard that TikTok, I was like, man, I'm glad that I have people that I know like that who can who can speak wisdom into me and if i'm not doing the correct things they could say you know if if billy blackwood looked at me and said i would not suggest you do that or maybe you shouldn't sing that song or you shouldn't do you can bet i'm going to take every word that he's right. saying to heart because he's billy blackwood and you know tara the same thing if she's like i don't think that'd be a great praise and worship song or you know you, you sound kind of pitchy here like i'm going to listen to everything she says Anybody at CNS is just you can trust what they're what they're saying. So again, you have to be careful who you're who you're getting advice from because even the devil knows scripture, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I I like to say it this way. Um CNS is a place to to ask the right people mm -hmm. the right question to get the right yeah. answer. And yeah, um, you know, so these connections, Devin, um, you know, you and I have talked multiple times since cns and you know uh we've had some brainstorming spitballing sessions mm -hmm. which we need to get back to some of those uh yeah. but man there's so many different angles with with our staff you know uh, becky is just yeah. absolutely one of the biggest encouragers i've i've ever met one of the sweet don't get me wrong i loved everybody on staff but becky i think was the sweetest person i've yeah. ever met to this day absolutely john john is um my siamese twin <laughs> billy i called billy yep. the other night and um 
uh, I told I told him this, Devin. Within 17 months, I lost my dad and I lost my big brother and Jeff Stice. And um, I told him the other night, Billy, Billy, you are the last voice of reason in my life. You literally are the yeah. last voice of reason. No, no pressure, no pressure. No, no pressure at all. Sorry. Uh, sorry if you don't want to be, but you are. <laughs> And you know what? We we just we had a heart to heart the other night and and Billy Billy has checked me over the years. Yeah. Billy has encouraged me over the years. Billy has um taught me. Billy has directed me. So, you know, these different connections, Devin, they all have their own unique angle and unique purpose. Absolutely. And, um, so it's it's a matter of us cultivating these in our lives. So let's 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 finish with this because we'll we'll wrap up here. Um, so you, you're on board now and you're part of what we're doing and we're moving yep. forward. And in fact, uh, we are doing an event in Cincinnati, October 27th and 28th. Uh, we do weekend regional sessions where we take CNS, we take our curriculum and our, our approach and our, some of our staff, and we go into areas and we do, um, weekend sessions and seminars and you're going to be part of this one with us in October. And uh, for for those that are listening, a couple things here. You've already heard Devin say, say on the angle of photography, uh, he's from Michigan, but he's meeting uh, an artist in Cincinnati this Sunday, and um, he can come to you. However, we're kind of bringing him to Cincinnati. If you're listening to this and you are able to be part of that weekend session with us. Devin's going to be there. We've got some time set aside that he's going to be able to do some mini photo shoots, which can greatly help you and enhance. If you haven't listened to the first podcast, go back to the April 18th podcast and listen to the importance of photos. And yeah, why, all you need is five good ones, yeah, five why, good photos. Why they matter and why they're so important. So um, you could come see him and us at the CNS Cincinnati Weekend Regional. That's done through the G GCSGMA, the Greater Cincinnati Southern Gospel Music Association. We're excited about that upcoming event. You can get all that information on our website, uh, www.cnsmusic.com. Uh, but Devin, if they don't see us in October and... Um, maybe aren't coming to convention because I know you've been you've been advertising that. How could someone get a hold of you either on the photography end or on the um the social media and how can people re reach you? Um so I just came out, I just launched a brand new website, um official devinramon.com and Devin is D-E-V-I-N. Ramon is R-A-M-O-N for those listening. Um, OfficialDevinRamon.com. You can contact me through there um, for social media or photography. Um, or if you find me on Facebook, you can shoot me a message there um, just at Devin Ramon. Um, I have a page called Devin Ramon Photography, but that is for my weddings and senior portraits. Um, so just shoot me a message on Facebook at Devin Ramon or visit my website and contact me through there. Awesome. All right, buddy. I appreciate your time today. And um, y'all, uh, if you take to heart this information Devin's given you, um, you're going to find out instead of it being a bad day, it will end up making this be your best day yet. Y'all be blessed. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name the Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www.cnsmusic.com. As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.